In this lecture, let's talk about some of the important type checking compiler options. Let's go to VS Code. And here you can see some of the type checking compiler options. Now, we have this strict option which is currently uncommented and it is set to true. And when this strict option is set to true, it is going to do strict type checking. And when it is going to do strict type checking, it is basically going to enable all these type checkings. So either you can enable all these type checkings one by one, or you can simply enable this strict option and it will enable all these type checking options. Okay. Now in your project, you might not want to use all these type checking options. So what you would do is you will go one by one through each of these type checking options and you will comment or uncomment an option based on whether you want to use it or not. So as I mentioned, when this strict option is selected, when it is set to true, that means it is going to apply all these type checking options and the type checking will be done strictly. Okay, so let's talk about these options one by one and let's start with no implicit any option. So when we enable this no implicit any option to true, that simply means that this option will not allow any parameter to implicitly have any data type. For example, let's go to auth.ts and there we created this num1 and num2 parameter. Now let me go ahead and let me remove these types. So by default, its type will be any, right? If I hover over this num1, you can see its type is any. And TypeScript will throw a compiler error in this case because what we have done is we have uncommented this no implicit any and we have also set it to true. So it will not allow any parameter to have any data type. Okay. If we go ahead and if we set it to false, in that case, it will allow us to use a parameter with any data type. Okay, so you see the parameter type is still any and now it is not throwing any error. But if it is set to true, in that case, it will not allow us to use a parameter of any data type. Okay, so let's save this file. And you will see that it will not allow us to use parameter of any data type. Now, if we go ahead and if we create a variable of any data type, here we are not getting any error. That's because the any type will only check for the parameters. It will not check for the variables. So this no implicit any, this option, it basically ensures that when we create a parameter, we must provide a data type for that, like this. Okay. All right, let's go back to tsconfig.json and again, I will comment this option because when we have enabled this strict option to true at that time, anyway, this no implicit any, this type check is already enabled. All right, then we also have this strict null checks. What this option will basically do is it will check for a possible null value and it throws an error if that value can be null. So for example, let me save the changes here. Let me close this auth.js and let's go to app.ts. Now here, if you remember, when we tried to access this button element from the DOM using this get element by ID method, at that time, if I don't include this exclamation, we will get an error. That's because TypeScript knows that this expression here might return a null value. Now, when this expression will return a null value, when in the DOM, we don't have any button element with this ID BTN. So it might be possible that we have misspelled this value, the string value, which we are passing here, the ID value, or something else has happened because of which this expression might not find that button element. And in that case, it will return null. So TypeScript knows that here, this button can have a null value. And if it will have a null value on that, when we are trying to access this add event listener method, it might throw a runtime error. So when we enable this option, strict null checks, at that time, if TypeScript finds any value which might have a potential null value, it will immediately throw a compile time error so that we can avoid any runtime error which can occur if that value returns null. Now, if I go ahead and if I set this option to false, you will see that that error is gone. 
so now you can see that that error is gone now it is not checking for any potential null value but it's always good to enable this option so that we will avoid any runtime error and since this strict option is already enabled we don't need to explicitly enable this option we can comment it it is by default enabled when this strict option is uncommented and set to true all right then we also have this strict bind call apply option let's understand this one so this option is applied on bind call and apply methods so we basically use bind call and apply method to set the value for this variable explicitly you might be knowing this from your javascript knowledge so let's go to app.ts and there let's again this exclamation here to avoid this error now why we are using this exclamation because by using this exclamation we are telling typescript that we as a developer know that this line will certainly return a value so we are assuring typescript that this line will not return a null value it will never return a null value it is always going to return a button element and we are telling this to typescript by using this exclamation after this expression okay anyway so here to understand checked bind call apply what we are going to do is we are going to create a function let's call it maybe click handler let's make this h in caps and let's say this is going to take a parameter maybe a message which is going to be of type string okay and then what we are going to do is we are going to log that message in the console using this console.log statement so here i'll simply say message okay and let's remove this function from here and now let's go ahead and let's pass this click handler function there now when we are passing this click handler function this click handler function is also expecting a value for this message parameter now here we are passing this click handler function as a callback function so we cannot use parenthesis like this and then pass a value because here we don't want to call that function we want to pass it as a callback function right so here we want to pass this click handler as a callback function and at the same time we also want to pass a value for this message parameter now how are we going to do that for that let's use the bind method now the first parameter which this bind method takes is the value for the this keyword since inside this click handler function we are not using any this keyword i will simply pass null and now we also need to pass a value for this message parameter okay so for the message parameter let's pass a string value let's say button is clicked so now you see we don't have any error but this bind method it is not mandatory to pass this second parameter the second argument okay but since we have enabled this strict bind call apply typescript knows that the function which we are passing here it is expecting a value for this message parameter so it is doing that strict check when we are using this bind method if i go ahead and if i set it to false let's save the changes that error should be gone because only the first argument to this bind method is mandatory rest other arguments are optional okay so here we are simply calling this click handler function by using this bind method but to this click handler function currently we are not passing any value for this message parameter this null which we are passing here it is a value for this keyword inside this function but inside this click handler function we are not using this keyword so that's why i have set it to null but for the message parameter we are not passing any value and here typescript is not giving us any error because we have set this strict bind call apply to false but if we set it to true you will see that we immediately get an error and if we hover over this error it says no overload matches this call basically it is telling that this click handler function is expecting a value for message parameter which we are not passing but as soon as we pass that value that error is gone so this is what this strict bind call apply option does so the same thing will be also applied on the call method and the apply method all right let's comment this option also because as i have mentioned earlier since this strict is enabled 
all these options are enabled by default. Now here we also have other options which I'm not going to go deep into. The one more option which I want to talk about here is always strict. Now what this does is if we enable this, it will make sure that whatever JavaScript file gets generated for the TypeScript file, that JavaScript file is in strict mode. So currently all the JavaScript files which is getting generated, you will notice that it is using this use strict string. That means that JavaScript file is in strict mode. So this is the default behavior. If we go ahead and if I uncomment this option and if I set it to false, that means now we don't want to generate the JavaScript file in strict mode. We don't want to have this use strict. So if I compile this application, now if I go to app.js, there you will notice that that use strict has been removed. So now this JavaScript file is not in strict mode. But we don't want to enable this option. So I don't want to set it to false. Okay, let me save the changes and let's comment this one. All right, so in this lecture, we talked about some of the type checking options. Now I'm going to share a document which you can refer to in order to learn more about these compiler options. All right, so this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.